Okay, welcome to the second video that I am uh, creating for War Tales. So this run is uh, just meant to be a bit of a fun one. Um, I was basically aiming to get a number of characters up to as high a level as I possibly could in the demo. Uh, I wanted to see if I can get a party of four characters up to level seven. I think it's uh, a little bit ambitious given the limited number of fights. But I had a bit of a theory that I wanted to test out, and so I uh, started this runoff to see how it would go. Um, I have started look pretty much as per normal, uh, absolutely no need for any specific characteristics, uh, no skills on any of the party members, so just taking sort of whatever I got given. Uh, I do plan to ditch a couple of party members early on and then pick some more up, so rather than getting the first four that I get given, I'll, um, I'll take some others as they come up. So the other thing that I wanted to do was to try a build where I had quite a lot of rangers in the team, all with skills that would kind of complement each other to stop them getting stuck in uh, too much melee combat. But I thought it'd be quite a fun group because it means that I can take out quite a lot of ranged characters and, uh, uh, and take them out quite quickly as well. So just sort of talking over the start here, because there's uh, it's a, a pretty standard sort of a start. Um, head head off to Stromcap and grab some quests. Uh, collect a couple of little resources on the way, including the uh, Altus Salt Mine. Always good to get a little bit of extra um, extra ore. Uh, one of the things that I do do is try to collect as much um, influence as I can through this first little bit. So you'll see me kind of pick up little bits of influence from the quests around the place that I can because I know I'm going to have to use it later when I actually do start hiring more party members as well. Uh, so I get rid of my archer and my brute here, so I'm just running with a swordsman and a ranger. Uh, I do have to say, I think the, the rangers are my favourite overall class from the, the demo, probably because they just deal such a stupid amount of damage uh, once you get them to level 3 and, and get them a weapon. Uh, so Mount Altus Tower here, it was a fairly strong party, and there was definitely no way that my current team could, could take them out, so have to go and do the Lund fight first. I do think... There is a bit of a difference, uh, playing on normal, you do get a little bit more leeway when you're attacking some of the camps, whereas playing on hard, you definitely need to have a few more people in the party just to minimise losses, I guess. So the Matthias Lund fight, if you watched my um, Robin Hood to Archer video, it'll look pretty familiar where I just kite him along. Um, always works quite nicely though. I think I, I did almost make a mistake here and it was pretty close as to whether he was going to target the right person or not. So it was a little bit of a mistake uh, going through and just slightly too narrow a gap there. But it worked. It was fine in the end. Not a problem. Uh, so the reason that I chose to keep a swordsman in the group as well is just because uh, I needed someone that was a little bit tanky and could just take a couple of hits here and there, and having that shield is nice as well. Alright, two battles down. Um, basically, levelling up. Uh, in this run, I did put all of my points into the primary attribute, so dexterity for the rangers and strength for the swordsman. Um, bit with the swordsman, I basically get enough health and constitution through uh, the level 3 and 5 talents, so I wasn't worried too much about that. Um, I've obviously taken run as my first skill, I like trying to avoid those people, and now that I am level 6, I can take this t uh, tower on. The, the, the difference that those levels make is absolutely huge, and all the extra skills. And I really love the ranger's knife throw, just for doing some extra damage. So you'll see I just cheekily use it for uh, getting getting use out of some of his skills, even when I don't really need to, just to, just to throw some extra knives along. Alrighty, three fights down. As you know, the demo is only a seven fight limit, so really trying to pick my fights carefully. Uh, this is the, the tower and the lighthouse are two good fights to take, usually because you get a little bit of 
uh, loot from the fight, you get the experience obviously, and you also get a little bit of gear to sell as well, uh, as well as a knowledge book too. So there's a few, few good reasons to um, clear out either the tower or the lighthouse. Um, the other thing with the, them is that if you do attack them, um, they reduce the difficulty of the uh, final bandit fight by one star. I don't actually know what that equates to in terms of uh, numbers change. I haven't sort of done too many tests and check that. But it does make it easier, definitely. Alrighty, so now that we've um, got some experience, uh, the next sort of job is just to run around and collect a bunch of resources to uh, have a little bit of a stockpile. So the, the aim here is to build a bit of a bank up because we are going to have to hire uh, a number of people. Um, so heading over to kind of some of the different little places that you can loot things from and just picking some stuff up. So I don't worry about um, collecting Jimmy Cleave's body or anything like that. It's just don't have much carry weight available. So you may notice I do have the resources to make a tent and a cooking pot, but I actually don't make either of them yet just because once crafted, they actually weigh an absolute ton and your, your party needs to have another pony for them to really be useful. Those wolves were very pesky this run. Normally you don't have to run away from the same mob too many times, but this time they just wanted some flesh. Alrighty, just click the blacksmith. I'm not really going to use him this time. I'll make my own blacksmith. Um, you do have to make sure you watch out for the guard after you capture him sometimes because some you, you can aggravate them and they can, uh, they can aggro you. Uh, and fighting guardsmen is not what you want to do when there's only two of you in the party. So I hand the blacksmith over. Um, hand in my quests, so I've got quite a bank now. And just sell a whole bunch of the things that I'm not really going to use. So I'm, you know, not really planning on um, doing much alchemy this run. Um, so didn't didn't worry too much about it. Uh, since I knew I was going to be going for a lot of rogues this run as well, I did make a couple of extra daggers, and it means that you need fewer knowledge points if you have more of the same class in your in your band as well. You don't have to unlock as many different weapons and recipes and all that kind of stuff. So it just means that you don't have to collect absolutely everything on the map just to make sure you're um, at maximum power. Craft a few armors, which you will see later come in very, very handy. And I probably should have picked up a few more tools here as well. So once you start getting better armor, you need more tools to repair it. Uh, and repairing your armor between fights just means you can stay away from the town a little bit longer without having to loot back as many times. Next location is grab some ponies. Now I actually grabbed two ponies this time. Uh, I really love having a huge amount of carry weight, uh, particularly with only a couple of people in the party to start with. You end up having a lot of money. And sorry, that, uh, that load was just me taking a little break in the run. Cool, cool. Having all the carry weight and the extra cash, as I said, just allows me to buy a bunch of stuff. Uh, I never want to be short on food, um, tools for repairing, that kind of stuff. Um, just makes, the, makes it a little bit easier to, to stay out and about. Uh, I think particularly in the um, full version of the game, it's going to be really handy to just carry some extras all the time. Uh, I do have to avoid the guard because I, I am wanted quite a lot of the time in this game. Um, I do tend to sort of steal everything that I can possibly steal, and that, that obviously causes some angst sometimes. Now that I've got my ponies, I can make my tent. Uh, I don't worry about the cooking pot straight away, um, mainly because I, like I've got a lot of raw food to cook, but uh, I don't have someone with a profession yet, 
and I'm not really um, struggling for feeding the party, so. It will be one of the next things I get. So there's a few mobs in this forest, so do watch out while you're dodging them. And it's to draw one of them just there. And sometimes you just have to sort of sit and wait in a corner for everyone to go away. I cut it a little bit close with those wolves, but I was pretty sure I could get away. Um, so still just heading around collecting resources. Now, here I do actually find an interesting little thing. So they're selling linen, one of the specialist resources, for only 30 gold or 32 gold, I think it was. Um, since I have the carry weight, I actually picked them up just as a bit of an experiment to see uh, how much they would sell for in the town and whether I could sell them. Because, I don't know, sometimes this wanted stuff is a little bit... Hmm, I, I think it needs a, a few tweaks in the actual main version of the game because... Uh, trying to sell something like that that is stolen just doesn't seem to work properly at the moment. There you go, I tried and it just maxed out my wanted capacity again. Uh, I do just take the casket mine fight. This is a really, really good fight in the demo because it's got the, it's just got a ton of resources in there. And you can see now, like this fight with a little bit of gear on these two characters just absolutely melts even quite tough raiders. So the henchman had, oh, I think it was about 40 armor and 70, 75 health, and he's down in sort of round one, round two. Um, obviously the raiders with their targeting are very easy to avoid, and the their archer ends up actually doing quite a lot of damage to many of them here. Alrighty. Doing a little mining. I think I do miss a few, um, a few kind of perfect mines, but overall losing a, a couple of sort of ore here or there on a run where you're not running with a, a full party or anything doesn't make too much of a difference. Um, I think in the main game it will be the, like the way that I'm going to try to play it is no save scumming. Uh, just to you know, see how the party goes without sort of needing all that to happen, like needing every single bit of resource. Uh, Iron Man will be fun as well. I am looking forward to an Iron Man mode run. Um, I just, you might have noticed how I popped in and checked out what the bandit camp had in it at the moment. Um, so there were eight poachers and five bandits, I think it is. Um, so definitely more than my two people can handle, even with, uh, all their gear at the moment. And just had to do a little pause here. Whilst some, uh, other real world things got in the way. All right, heading back to town. You will notice I do have to avoid the guards. Still wanted again from trying to sell things to the merchant earlier. And I held on to a couple of weapons here, so Lund's hammer and the spear, just in case I picked up um, a really good brute or spearman recruit. So here I've hired the two level one uh, companions at the inn, and then I dismissed them straight away. So the only reason I hired them was to refresh the companions available. It did burn quite a lot of influence and a little bit of cash that I had. So you, the next couple of things that I'm doing are just trying to make a little bit more money back. So uh, sell some medicine, start selling a few things that I uh, don't need, and also crafting some extra um, armor and weapons for the people that I'm about to go and pick up and hire. So here I make a bunch of quilted tunics. Uh, I make a number of them quite poorly and the return on investment for making a one star tunic is only one extra gold than what the resources cost. Uh, the return on making a two star tunic is about 15 gold. So you almost double your gold for buying leather and cloth just by making those basic tunics. Making weapons will generally make you more money uh, off the blacksmith, so more profit anyway. 
but it does normally require quite a lot of ore. So if you have a big party, you can't make too many spare weapons uh, if you want your party to be fully equipped. So my next goal, I was just checking to see whether the inn had uh, refreshed it itself yet. Uh, I'm not too sure exactly how long the refresh timer is on new companions arriving. Um, I'm guessing it's probably like a day or so, similar to the quests. But you normally don't hire people that frequently for it to be an issue. <laughs> there, I made the mistake of running out of lockpicks, so whoops. But again, oh well, move on. Probably nothing in there that would uh, be very game changing. So there's the lighthouse, that one, as I said, uh, has a little star on it. So when you kill that, it makes the, the final bandit fight a little bit easier. So Hackett, the guy that you can hire here, if you have some medicine, he will join your party and he joins at the uh, highest level of your party. So I've got level sixes at the moment and so I choose him as well. Now, for all the rogue, oh, all the rangers that I get, sorry, I'll, I'll call them rogues every now and again just because of the daggers. For all of the um, rangers that I get in the party, uh, I do make them strategists, which give them the skill to uh, allow everyone within an area to disengage. Now, this is a really, really cool skill when you've got it on a couple of rangers because it really synergizes well with them. A ranger getting a free attack is a huge amount of damage. Um, if they haven't already killed something, they likely will on that retaliation. And so for a single point, a single action point, you can get one or two, sometimes three, not very often three, um, but you know, two party members pretty often um, doing an attack, which is makes it about four times as valuable as Fury at half the cost. So it's just substantial, it blows Fury out of the water. I do want to see a couple of changes made to the Fury skill when it, um, when it goes live. So I've just tried to sell my goods again in town and it's just um, pushed my wanted status back all, all the way up to the top. And I checked it in again, there were some new members there and I hired a level four rogue. So Pretty happy there was a rogue there. I was hoping that they, it would be a slightly higher level than level four, um, just because all my companions are level six. All right, start of the main bandit fight. Okay, so this fight is, uh, it's a pretty big one. 13 enemy opponents is, is not small. Even if you can, can kill them, uh, they're gonna land a lot of hits on the party. Now, a lot of my guys are not very high on health or armor, so you, Hackett in particular only has about 30 total health and armor. Uh, but some of my rangers are already at the point they can one-shot enemies, which is lovely. So there you go, a couple of one-shots. And Hackett, the newest recruit, actually it might not be Hackett, it's the level four guy, sorry. Hildingic. Hildingic. I don't know how you pronounce that. Anyway, he's uh he's not too well off. So you will see me bring some people down. I'm, I prefer not losing party members when I have a choice. Uh, I will be aiming to keep my guys alive as much as possible. And then you can see his dagger throw is actually the, the thing that secures a couple of kills. And my swordsman also copying a little bit of a beating, but that is exactly what he is for. I think by now he's got close to 100 constitution so he's got a fair bit of health and that's me just retreating both of my rangers away and taking out anything that you that may uh damage them so this is using the disengage skill again letting the same guy do more attacks each round cool battle five complete i uh, got a couple of level sevens out of that now you'll notice the little level up icon doesn't go away because the level seven skills aren't there yet. Um, you can't choose a level seven skill, but it thinks that you should be able to select one. The camp is pretty good. It usually uh, has a, a fair amount of stuff in it. 
Um, there are a few heavy things, so I do recommend coming when you've got a whole lot of extra carry space as well. Um, the weapons are the most valuable thing you can pick up. The armor is sometimes nice, but is also quite heavy. So uh, you can see I'm at 139.6 out of 140. So having those three ponies is very nice. Uh, and had anyone died as well, I obviously would be over the carry weight. Having a slightly larger party does mean you eat through food, so um, obviously the extra uh, food for, like you, you end up shedding more of your weight because of the amount of food you're eating. If I had learnt more cooking skill, and I obviously have the knowledge points for it, I, I could have cooked more food and then carried a little bit less overall, but eh, really doesn't make much difference. Some more pesky wolves. And we're heading into the Sicker fight, very soon anyway. So I just sell off all the weapons and armor that I know I'm not going to use to a random merchant. And get ready for the fight. Okay, so this one, Sicker is level 7 and so are the wolves. So the standard wolves have just over 70 health and Sicker has 210. Uh, they also deal an absolute crap ton of damage, um, as well as bite, and, sorry, cause you to bleed. So, uh, this fight is, it was always going to be a tough one, and I actually liked doing it last in this instance just for that reason. So there I just had a ranger use his disengage, got a couple of free attacks, and you will see me here... Uh, exit the game very soon because I realized that that battle was completely unwinnable. Uh, Sika does 100 damage per hit which one shots any of my party members and so I have to line this fight up in a way that she doesn't get many attacks off and I take out all the other wolves very very efficiently. So over on the left side of the fight I'm trying to body block her and on the right side, I'm trying to take out these four wolves as quickly as possible. So I use my disengage, throws a knife, use a heal to throw a knife, attack, throw another knife. So you can get three knife attacks off per round. So my newest ranger is a sacrificial lamb for the slaughter over on the left. He was never going to survive this fight, unfortunately. Poor fellow. Okay, so here I'm just trying to figure out, can I do this without Sicker attacking me this round? So I try to stay out of her range, but still dealing as much damage as I can. So she runs around, and then now what I need to do is kill these two wolves off before they get to go, and figure out who I want Sicker to attack next round. So there's no way for me to avoid her damage, and I don't want her to hit my unit with heal. So I run him off the back and unfortunately have two dying members. So I heal my other ranger up, throw a knife, run in, attack, throw a knife, and then the other guy uses his disengage and then attacks to kill her. So that fight was extremely close. Uh, I was a round off being mauled to death by a sicker. Um, and one party member did die, so a little bit sad, but oh well. Um, last little bit of the video, look, there's still one fight left, but um, there's no, no particular enemy that I, uh, I want to attack. Um, I do have the save file, I don't know if anyone wants me to try send one through, I don't know if other people's save files work or not. But here I just make a bunch of equipment, you know, still got a bunch of money, a bunch of influence, so you, um, yeah, I could play around with another couple of things or recipes if I wanted to as well. Um, yep, got the armor, tapered armor upgrade. I'm really keen to see all the armor upgrades and, and how you get access to some of them in the full version. Uh, I can't wait to go hunting all the beasts uh, and also trying to be a criminal a little bit more, um, as well as... Oh, like, oh, there's, there's so many things I want to try. So, fingers fingers crossed, closed beta and full version come soon enough, or early access, I guess. 
Um, so end of the video is really just me making, you know, more random stuff out of the resources I have remaining. Um, so there's no more fights or anything. And I just make a bunch of money. My guys all have the armor that they need. So there you go, a bit over 1,100 gold. And that is the end. So thank you for watching. Oh, this is right. The last thing I do here is um, just try to get my wanted level really low and sell those goods, but I never managed to. Spoiler. Alright, thanks for watching. Ciao.